How's everybody doing? Director Childress. Oh, wow. Good. Hey, Director. How you doing? Hey, Mayor. Hello. Good evening, all. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Good evening. Okay. <laughs> All right, we'll get started. <clears throat> okay. The notice requirement provided for the open public meetings law has been satisfied. Notice was properly given, said notice having been transmitted to the Courier News on Friday, April 10th, 2020, as well as posting on the city's website. Clerk, may I have a roll call? You're muted, Clerk, but present. <laughs> good. Councilman Good. Present. Councilman McKenna. Present. Councilman McCray. Present. Councilwoman Mills Ransom. Present. Vice President Armadi. Here. And Council President Hockaday. Here. Former Vice President of Forum. Thank you, Clerk. Uh, do we have any communications from the mayor? Yes, we have a correspondence dated August 7th, 2020 from His Honor the Mayor, Adrian O'Map, addressed to members of the governing body notifying the appointment of Abby Levinson as the acting business administrator for the city of Plainfield, effective August 10th, 2020. All right. Uh, that's fine. All right. Uh, any, well, any comments regarding that, Mayor? Did you want to say a word or two, or is, is that fine? your choice well i just want to congratulate uh, abby on being chosen as the acting business administrator i look forward to all cabinet members as well as council members and everyone working with abby to make sure that she's successful and that we continue to move the city forward so i say congratulations to abby and i thank her for being or for agreeing to be in this role. Thank you. Thank you. All right, congratulations as well. Uh, okay. So, real quick, Council President. Sure. Uh, congratulations, uh, Ms. Levinson, on, on uh, the acting role. J just a quick question, and either yourself or the mayor can, can answer, but if I'm not mistaken, congratulations on your uh, impending uh, addition to your family, but um, thank you. The question is what are you not going to take maternity leave or, or how will that be handled? And Mayor, I'll, I'll answer. Can you hear me? Okay. I, um, I will be taking a, a shorter than planned maternity leave, but I will be taking a maternity leave. And during that time, um, the city clerk who's very familiar with the acting business administrator role will be stepping in in my place. Okay. So uh, next we will move to, uh, I want to hear from the IT, uh, the, the director of communications, Jazz Clayton. Hunt. Um, you have a presentation on our new uh, reporting. Uh, you have the floor, director. Thank you, Council President. So um, last week I sent some communication to the council as well as um, you know other members of the administration to talk about the rollout of the reporting app that went actually went live today. And so um, I just wanted to give a short uh, walkthrough demonstration of how the um, 
the reporting app works and how it will be uh, beneficial for residents. Um, I'm going to share my screen right now. And, um, I'm just going to walk, I'm just going to share it through um, the playing field um, page. You can down, most, we're encouraging most everyone to download it, the app as far as possible. However, those who don't wish to download the app, they can simply click on our website and there is a button there that says uh, something to report. If you click on it, it will take you to the reported page that was created for this purpose. And there is an option here where you can say click to access from desktop or mobile device. Um, either way, it will take you to the reported um, page. And here you'll see, so what has happened is that reported has put a geofence around the city of Plainfield. So once you are within the city limits, the city of Plainfield will pop up as an option for where you want to uh, file your report. So you click on that. And then these are the departments that we have participating at the moment. And so, for example, if you want to send a report to the DPW department, you would just click on public works. We have a box that pops up that to, you know says, obviously, if it's an emergency, don't use this app, call 911. Um, and then the person filing the report would simply um, go through the menu provided to see if um, their concern is listed there. Um, so for example, we'll say leave for brush removal. It asks if you're reporting as a resident or property owner or a visitor or city employee or other. If it's say other, I'd rather not say, or let's say resident or property owner. And um, it prompts you to put in the date and time. And you also have, and you could put in the address. You also have, um, you could give additional comments here and you have the option to add a photo or video and add it to the um, report. And you have the option to either include your contact information if you want to, or say no and report anonymously. Um, if you decide to include your contact info, of course, another box pops up and you have to populate that. And then you would quick, you, know, you would simply um, hit submit. And when you do that, um, it gives you a confirmation and um, a report number so that if you want to check back to see if there was a response given or whatever, you can get back in. And um, if you will notice at the top, I should have mentioned this earlier, you have the option to change to, there are over, there are a hundred languages in here. So if, for example, someone speaks Afrikaans and they don't speak English, it would allow them to type in that language and everything, all the uh, commands would be in that language. However, when the report comes to us, it would be translated to English. So for those who English is not their first language, it's not prohibitive for them to, you know, um, share their concern. Um, as soon as, so we have an auto response in there. As soon as, as someone uh, files a report, they get an immediate uh, thing saying, you know, we got your we got your report and someone will follow up with you um, momentarily. Now, right now the reports are routed to the different departments and they're also copied to um, the communications IT department. And we are able to log into the dashboard to see. If, um, so whenever it goes to the departments and they have action on it, they're supposed to log into the dashboard and note what action was taken and also if it's concluded. And that way we can go in and say, and, and know that it was closed and there was action taken on it in case we get another report or a similar report. And this way we're also able to pull monthly reports to see how many were acted on, how many are still outstanding and where the status is with them. And for the immediate future, as I said, a copy will go to communications IT and we will do a follow-up within 24 to 48 hours, just to ensure that action is being taken on all the reports. Um, so that's the um, really quick overview of how the program works. Um, over the next few weeks or so, we'll be doing a hard push. Um, you will see uh, 
um, marketing materials that look similar to what you see here, encouraging people to download the app and to um, communicate with the city. And of course, the whole idea behind it is just making the city more accessible and trying to get information across as quickly as possible to the departments and to um, try and get you know a quicker response out there to residents' concerns. And it also you know empowers our residents, it empowers our visitors because um, it's a direct line into the city or it's an easy way to report it, especially for people who maybe don't want to, for whatever reason, have their name and numbers involved in filing a report. So, um, I'd be if there are any questions, I'd be happy to address them. Okay, I'll look for questions from council if anybody uh, wants to say anything about this. Council President, I have a question. You go right ahead, Councilman Good. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Director Hunt, for that uh, presentation. Um, Thank you for also the communication uh, via email, letting us know that today was the launch date. Just have one question. Is it safe for me to assume that this will be available in the newsletter every time it comes out? So that way, you know, or is it just for the launch date? No, it well, we had a link for the, at least for the next few weeks, we're putting it in every edition of the newsletter. It was in the one today, and we'll be repeating that in all the other, um, editions until you know as long as it we feel that it's been you know we've saturated <laughs> everyone knows about it okay so for those that don't get the newsletter will it's there be some social media and we'll be doing a series of robocalls encouraging people to download the app thank you so much appreciate it awesome. any other council members wish to chime in i uh, have a question sure um, so first, I want to say, uh, Director Clayton Hunt, that this is a great idea. I like the fact that residents can report things in real time. Um, so just two things. So one, a resident texted me that during your presentation, they didn't see your large screen like we did. So if it's possible, can you, uh, I guess, like have like a video or something to show residents how it works? Um, also, um, this question is more for Corporation Council. So with us getting these reports in real time and then having to go through a process, do we have like any liability or something when it comes to fixing the problems? So like a pothole, like if somebody hits a pothole, if somebody reports the pothole and then they hit it, does that give us any liability? Like, oh, we didn't fix it in enough time or anything like that? Well, you, you raise a good question, uh, Councilman Davis. Uh, a question of notice is always an issue when it comes to... <clears throat> involving property when did we know about it um so from that perspective yes it could create an additional requirement of notice how i believe that having the ability to fix problems more uh quickly is of greater value to us than the liability that it could potentially create okay um also director Curry Hunt, just to follow up so if i understood correctly the reports would come to your office then your office would then disseminate them to the proper departments no, they go to the department and to my office simultaneously. Okay. Thank you. You're very welcome. Okay. I'm looking for any uh, other council members that wish to uh, ask questions or comment. <clears throat> uh, just a quick question about the routing because, you know, citizens are not always going to be particularly um, accurate in selecting the right department that they think is responsible. So how, how does that work on report it? with respect to someone choosing, um, you know, I'll just make it up, police department, animal control, when it should go to code enforcement. Do, do the department, does animal control, and I assume that's going to Dr. Nadir's office or, or Director Brown's office, have the control to then reroute that to code enforcement, or how does that work? Um, well, it, the copy that comes to communications, um, it would tell us what department it went to. And like I said, we're checking, our department is checking all those reports on a daily basis. So we would be responsible for rerouting it to the appropriate department. So the system allows you to change the department? I would, I, to be honest, I am not sure if the system would allow me to change. I don't think it allows me to change the report as it comes in. However, I would bring it to the, we would bring it to the attention of the appropriate department. In the system, 
it probably would still be marked as going to animal control. I, I would encourage you to, to get with reported to see if you could get some sort of admin capability to, you know, change that to the appropriate department just to save, you know, paperwork time and then misreporting because then you're going to have stuff going to animal control that isn't animal control. And so your data out of that is going to be all messed up. Thank you for that suggestion. I will follow up on that. All right. Well, you know, uh, I, again, Director I, uh, and Mayor and his administration, this is a, <clears throat> a, a, an application, a feature that will enable us to be more agile in terms of responding to concerns uh, of our residents. Uh, and also really enabling the residents to be the, the, the true eyes and ears of all of us, because we know we can't be everywhere all at the same time. So this enables us to, to, to almost be everywhere at the same time through our residents. So, you know, we wanted to have this presentation so that residents know about it. Uh, and, you know, we'll continue to uh, give information uh, about this. Uh, I'm sure the council people will, will also tout this as a feature uh, in order to, uh, to provide enhanced constituent services. Uh, and we just wanna keep, keep drilling down on it because we think that uh, it can be something that, that, that makes, uh, gives give better customer service to, to our residents uh, you know, from, from all of our perspective. So kudos on this. Uh, we're gonna now move towards uh, consideration of public hearing, second reading and final passage. Uh, clerk. Uh, please. Uh, when, just point of order, Council President, I don't think you've had public comment yet, unless I'm mistaken. No, yeah, we'll have public comment with each individual. Uh, don't, don't we have public comment be, on non-agenda um, items beforehand? Uh, we do it after. I believe that follows the uh, we do it? Uh, okay. The okay. Read. okay, thank you. No problem. <clears throat> okay, consideration of public hearing, second reading, and final passage. Clerk, uh, please read MC 2020-14 by title and further certify that all uh, that the ordinance has complied with all statutory publication requirements. MC <clears throat> the ordinance adopted stands <clears throat> for the scattered city owned parking lots and adjacent lots redevelopment area. It is hereby certified that the notice of public hearing on this ordinance was published. Courier News on July 23rd, 2020. Okay, uh, clerk, you, you may need to move a little closer to your microphone because yes. I'm not sure if other people he'll hear you uh, at a low volume. Uh, I could hear you, but it was it was pretty faint. Is this better? Uh, yeah, that was a little better. Yeah. yeah. Council hey. President, I'm not so sure it's just background noise that's also cutting them off. There's a lot of like echoes and things too, I'm getting. All right, I'll read it again. MC 202014 is an ordinance adopting the redevelopment plan for the scattered city owned parking lots and adjacent lots and redevelopment areas hereby certify that the notice of the public hearing on this ordinance was published in the Courier News on July 23rd, 2020. Thank you, much better. Uh, the floor is now open to any member of the public who would like to speak on this ordinance. So clerk, I'm gonna ask for you to uh, monitor the hand raising feature to see if any members of the public raise their hands. Uh, as customary, uh, we ask that you raise your hand uh, and if you'd like to be heard on this ordinance. If you dialed in with a phone, it would be star nine to use the raise hand I, um, option. Thank you. We have no members of the public uh, that I've identified they want to speak, Council President. Okay, may I have a motion to close public hearing on this ordinance? Motion. Second. Okay, may I have a motion to adopt this ordinance on second reading and final passage? And if adopted, the ordinance shall be published as required by law. So moved. Second. Second. Clerk, roll call, please. Council members Davis. No. Councilman Good. Yes. Councilman McKenna. No. Councilman McCray. Yes. 
Councilwoman Mills Ransom. Councilwoman Mills Ransom, you're muted. I'll come back to her. Councilwoman Mills Ransom. Mm -hmm. My phone doesn't say I'm muted. Okay. We hear you now. Okay. So my response was yes. Okay. Vice President Armadi? Yes. Council President Hockaday? Yes. Five in favor, two opposed. This ordinance has been adopted. Okay, thank you. Clerk, please read MC 2020-15 by title and further certify that the ordinance has complied with all statutory publication requirements. MC 2020-15 is an ordinance adopting a redevelopment plan for the South Avenue corridor redevelopment area. It is hereby certified that the notice of the public hearing on this ordinance was published in the Courier News on July 23rd, 2020. The floor is now open to any member of the public who would like to speak on this ordinance. Okay, seeing none, uh, no individuals raise their hand. May I have a motion to adopt this ordinance on second reading and final so, passage? And if so adopted, the owner of this mm -hmm. has, shall be as required by law. Okay, we got a, mo we got a motion. Second. Move. Second. Move public hearing. Okay. I missed the second on that. Uh, thank thank you. you. Second, okay. Clerk, may I have a roll call? Council Member okay. Davis. Yes. Councilman Good. Yes. Councilman McKenna. No. Councilman McCray. Yes. Councilwoman Mills Ransom. Yes. Vice President Armadi. Yes. Council President Hockaday. Yes. Favor one opposed, ordinance but adopted on second reading and final passage. Thank you, clerk. Please read MC 2020-16, by title and further certify that the ordinance has complied with all statutory publication requirements. MC 2020-16 is an ordinance adopting the TODD West Redevelopment Plan Amendment dated June 4th, 2020. It is hereby certified that the notice of the public hearing on this ordinance was published in the Courier News on July 23rd, 2020. The floor is now open to any member of the public who'd like to speak on this ordinance. Okay, seeing none, I have a motion to close public hearing on this ordinance. Motion. Okay, may I have a, I didn't hear the second, it was kind of the same. Also, President, am I the only one that's the audio is going in and out because I'm, you're, you're chopping up on my end, maybe it's me, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it it I, might be helpful if everybody mutes if they're not talking. I think that's the problem. Okay, I, I, can we have the motion and second again, just for clarity, for the record? So be it. Second. Second. Thank you. Uh, may I have a motion to adopt this ordinance on second reading and final passage, and if adopted, the ordinance shall be published as required by law. So, so moved. Second. Thank you, clerk, may I have a roll call? Council members Davis. Yes. Good. Yes. McKenna. No. McCray. Yes. Mills Ransom. Yes. Vice President Armadi. Yes. Council President Hockaday. Yes. Six in favor, one opposed. This ordinance has been adopted on second reading and final passage. Okay, clerk, please read MC 2020-17 by title and further certify that the ordinance has complied with all statutory publication requirements. MC 202017 is an ordinance to amend chapter nine licenses, permits, and regulated activities, article 15, vehicles for transportation of passengers, taxi cabs, section 91520 forms, information to be given on chauffeurs licenses, applications, and section 91532, owner's responsibility for fitness of drivers. It's hereby certified that the notice of the public hearing on this ordinance was published in the Courier News on July 23rd, 2020. Floor is now open. Any member of the public who would like to speak on this ordinance?
the attendees seeing none, uh, may I have a motion to close public hearing on this ordinance? Moved. Second. Uh, may I have a motion to adopt this ordinance on second reading and final passage? And if adopted, the ordinance shall be published as required by law. So moved. Second. Clerk, may I have a roll call? Council members Davis. Yes. Good. Yes. McKenna. Yes. McCray. Yes. Mills Ransom. Yes. Vice President Armadi. Yes. Council President Hockaday. Yes. That is unanimous. This ordinance has been adopted on second reading and final passage. We now move to public comments, limited to resolutions, motions, and ordinances to be introduced on first reading. A total of 30 minutes has been allocated for public comments limited to resolutions and ordinances considered this evening. Uh, if you wish to be heard, please hit the hand icon to be recognized and you will be unmuted. Uh, once that occurs, please give your name and address for the record. Each speaker will be given three minutes. The floor is now open. Comments? Resolutions, motions, and ordinances to be introduced this evening. Okay, well, I see uh, one uh, participant, one member of the community here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, can... Council President, this is Mary Burwinkle from 1785 Sleepy Hollow Lane. And I would like to commend Councilperson Davis for putting a resolution up for the very sad death of our friend. Frank Diversa. Frank, is, Frank was um, a very good friend of mine, of the whole community, was a public guy. He could volunteer for something, he did. If he could support something, he did. It's very sad that Frank has died. And I offer my condolences to his wife, Liz, who is also a huge community volunteer and to all of his loved ones and there are tons of loved ones. So thank you so much. Absolutely. Absolutely. Very appropriate that you'd be honored in this in this way. Uh, and more. Let's see are there any other members of the public who wish to speak on motions, resolutions and ordinances to be considered on first reading? All right. Uh, seeing none, I'd like to make a motion to close public comments on resolutions, motions, and ordinances to be considered uh, introduced on first reading. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition, abstentions? Public hearing is now closed. Okay, clerk, will you please offer the resolutions? Resolution 231-20, conveying condolences to the family and friends of Mr. Uh, Frank Diversa. Okay. Uh, any questions or additional comments regarding this from council members? I just want to echo Ms. Burwinkle's sentiments. Uh, Mr. Diversa was a great first ward resident who did a lot um, for the first ward for the Plainfield Democratic City Committee. He was never afraid to speak truth to power or to call us to the carpet when he thought we were out of order. And I hope that other residents follow in his uh, spirit of saying what he felt, especially when he felt uh, it was right and it was necessary. Thank you for that, Councilman, Councilwoman Davis. <clears throat> okay, uh, do we have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition, abstentions? This resolution is unanimously approved. Okay. Resolution 232-20, authorizing the issuance of a bingo raffle license to the Plainfield Vikings. Any questions from council members? Okay, do we have a motion? Motion. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. In the opposition, abstentions, this resolution is approved. Resolution 23320 designating the Plainfield City Hall Plaza as the Black Lives Matter Plaza. Are there any questions from council? 
uh, Council President, I have more of a comment. Sure, go right ahead. Um, so while I fully support this resolution and I appreciate uh, the symbolic gestures that the city has taken to show its agreement and affirmation that Black lives in fact matter, I think we're at a critical juncture to show that Black lives matter through action and through deed. It is important that cities like ours set the tone and be the model of what it looks like when Black lives in fact matter. This is not just about the here and now, but it's about the future. We all have a role to play in creating a legacy that lives long past our times and public service. Everyone has a part to play in this. As council members, we should be leading the charge in creating legislation and championing resolutions that work to dismantle systemic racism. Every department in our city has a role to play as well. For example, our public works department can ensure that your zip code doesn't determine the quality of your neighborhood's infrastructure. Our police can ensure enforcement is fair and equitable. Communications can ensure that images and correspondence from the city represents diversity we all love in Plainfield and looks like all of our neighborhoods. Even our finance department can ensure that the companies we do business with represent the values that we hold so important in this community. They can work to ensure that we're not putting more money in pockets of companies that support other people or causes that benefit from the same systemic issues that we're seeking to change. I'm not saying that we're not doing this already, but some of these, um, but this time in history is an opportunity for Plainfield to be the standard bearer for not only the rest of the county or the state, but the rest of the country. Fannie Lou Hamer once said, no one is free until all of us are free. So in renaming City Hall Plaza and painting Black Lives Matter in our streets, let's also work together to develop policies and ordinances that improve the lives of our most marginalized and disenfranchised residents because Plainfield isn't one Plainfield until all of the residents can believe collectively in its bright future. Thank you. Absolutely, Councilwoman Davis. I, I, I agree with those comments 100%. Uh, and, 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 and that's why I was really <clears throat> glad to hear uh, when you were one of the members of, of the George Floyd Commission uh, doing you know, just one part of that, you know, thousand piece puzzle that we need to, to bring true equity uh, for, for all of our res residents. But, but, you know, the, those comments there certainly uh, are, are very, very well received and very important. So thank you for making them. Thank you for being you uh, and just continue uh, on with the struggle, Council. Um, any other questions or comments from, from council members? Okay, do we have a motion? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? Abstentions? Okay, this resolution is approved. Resolution 234-20, authorizing the award of a contract to All Paid Inc. Are there any questions from council members? Yes. Go right ahead. Um, so first, Mr. West, I'm happy to see that we have more flexibility in um, how residents can pay for things so they can truly trip, skip the trip to City Hall. But when we go through the budget, we always have those merchant fees. And I remember you said one time that we could not pass along their merchant fees to residents. But this is now saying that we are passing along those merchant fees. Um, so how are we able to do that now? No, at municipal court, we can't pass on the merchant fees. Okay. So everywhere else we can. That's correct. Okay, thank if, you so if, much. All right. Any other questions from council members? Okay, do we have a motion? So moved. moved. Uh, second. second. Okay, mm -hmm. those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? Abstentions? This resolution is approved. Resolution 235-20 authorizing approval to amend the CY 2020 municipal budget to insert uh, items of special revenue. Any questions from council? Yes. Go right ahead, Councilwoman Davis. Um, so I saw one of the items inserted was um, from the DOT for train station improvements. Uh, can we kind of speak to what those improvements are or what we foresee them being? On that one, I'm not in the best position to talk about the improvements. So I would I would reach out to Orrin to talk about all that we plan on doing 
around the train station with this hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Uh, Director Dabney's on on the line. We can. Uh, Director Dabney, you have the floor. If you have anything to add regarding this. Okay, as far as improvements, yeah, we're going to do some concrete work and uh, some benches and uh, some landscaping work. That's what that fund, those funds are for. Around the world. Thank you, thank you, Director. Council President. Yes, go right ahead, Council Member. Uh, Director Dabney, is that enough? Well, there'll be more coming as we move forward. That's all. That's the okay. Start. All right. Thank you. Okay. Do we have a motion? Moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. In the, in the opposition? Abstentions? This resolution is approved. Resolution 23620, authorizing change order number two for the release of the performance bond for Hannah Atkins basketball improvement project. Are there any questions from council members? Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, aye. Any opposition? Abstentions? This resolution is approved. Resolution 23720, authorizing the award of a contract to Land Tech Group, Inc. Are there any questions from council members? Seeing none, do we have a motion? Move. Yes. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? Abstentions? This resolution is approved. Resolution 23820, authorizing the award of a contract to field turf. Are there any questions from council members regarding this resolution? Okay. All right, seeing none, do we have a motion? So, so moved. moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? Abstentions? This resolution is approved. Resolution 23920, authorizing approval for street opening at 511 New Street to New Jersey American Water. Are there any questions from council members? Do we have a motion? Motion. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? Abstentions? This resolution is approved. Resolution 24020, authorizing approval for the adoption of the City of Plainfield Manual of Policies and Procedures for locally administered federal projects. Do we have questions from council members? All right, seeing none, do we have a motion? So moved. Move. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition, abstentions? This resolution is approved. Resolution 24120, authorizing the appointment of a waiver of residency to Joseph Havanek, Jr. Looking for questions from council members. I have a question. Go right ahead, councilwoman. Um, where was this job posted? How long was it posted for? And how many Plainfield residents applied for this position? Good question, councilwoman. It was posted for two and a half months, one month on the League of Municipalities website and two and a half months on our website here in Plainfield. There was no residents that applied from Plainfield. That we posted for two and a half months for that reason to, to try to get more residents to apply. Unfortunately, we have one person that submitted a, an application for this. And this requires quite a few licenses, which you hope some Plainfield residents do obtain those licenses over time. But no one had licenses, uh, no one applied. Thank you. Any other questions? Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Hmm. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? Abstentions? This resolution is approved. Resolution 24220, authorizing a lien placement for property cleanup. Any questions from council? Do we have a motion? So moved. moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? Abstentions? This resolution is approved. Resolution 24320, designating 1369 South Avenue Urban Renewal LLC as redeveloper for the redevelopment of certain properties in the city of Plainfield. 
Are there any questions from council members? Seeing none, do we have a motion? So, so moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposition? No. Extensions? Oh, uh, was that an opposition, Sean? Yes. Okay, clerk, uh, can we have a roll call? Roll call resolution 24320, council members Davis? Yes. Good? Yes. McKenna? No. McCray? Yes. Mills Ransom? Yes. Vice President Armadi? Yes. Council President Hockaday? Yes. Six in favor, one opposed. Resolution passes. Resolution 24420, designating certain properties commonly known as 925 through 927 South 2nd Street, 921 through 923 South 2nd Street, and 929 through 935 South 2nd Street as non condemnation redevelopment areas. We're looking for questions from council members. Yes, I have a question. Please go right ahead, Council. Uh, so, Director Jackson, um, I see in this redevelopment plan, it includes South 2nd Street Youth Center, the old one, not the new one. Um, so my concern is really about the historical significance that that building has to this city. Um, a lot of people remember it uh, back in the day when it was a youth center, um, like a true youth center. A lot of people remember it when it was the daycare before they moved onto Plainfield Avenue. Um, by including this in the area in need of redevelopment, um, can the building potentially be knocked down and changed into something else? Um, or can the building still stay and just the uses of it change? Okay, Councilwoman uh, Davis, uh, yes, the building can potentially be demolished as well as it could be reused. Uh, right now, we're just saying that it's an area in need of redevelopment. Uh, this is not the redevelopment plan, so it doesn't talk about permitted uses and all of those kinds of things, but it's just designating it as an area in need of redevelopment. I have uh, researched kind of all of the uses of this building since the early 1900s, and I forget the exact date uh, when it was erected, uh, but I have taken a look at that particular timeline. Uh, it also has significance in relationship to uh, the industrial properties, formerly all which were part of the Mack truck operation. And at one time it was the administrative headquarters. Uh, so uh, we have looked at its previous uses and we are, if uh, we're designated as an area in need of redevelopment, then we will go and create a redevelopment plan for this area. Council President. Yes, Councilman Good. Uh, Director Jackson, um, if that uh, edifice was left, is it safe to say that there's a lot of work that would need to be done inside? Because uh, from what I understand hearing in the past, that a lot of things in there need to be replaced or repaired. Yes, it would uh, require, if, if it was maintained, it would be the exterior only. Uh, it would essentially be a gut rehab. Gotcha. Thank you. Any other questions from council members? Yes. So as a follow-up, Director Jackson, um, in designating the area redevelopment and then potentially creating a redevelopment plan, um, in the redevelopment plan, are we going to talk about the, the his, or in redeveloping that area and speaking to developers, are we going to talk about the historical significance of that building and also is that a building that the city of Plainfield owns? It's currently a building that the city of Plainfield does own. Uh, we've owned it for a while, even when it was the former uh, South 2nd Street Youth Center, it was leased to them. And as we talk about the significance of the building, uh, we will talk about the significance of the area. Uh, remember, this property is directly across from Injectron which is a 10 acre industrial site and that I have uh, along with others on my team and NJIT been looking at the whole industrial corridor and also looking at the history and uh, that building, uh, we will definitely explain the significance of it in relationship to 
all of its prior uses and the current environment. Um, just one more question. Are there any deed restrictions in place for that building? Uh, not that I'm aware of. None have come to light in terms of our research. So there's no deed restriction. Thank you. Okay. Good. Right, do we have a motion? So moved. moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? Abstentions? Yes. Oh, okay. Clerk, let's have a roll call. Council members Davis? No. Good? Yes. McKenna? Yes. McCray? Yes. Mills Ransom? Yes. Vice President Armadi? Yes. Council President Hockaday? Yes. Six in favor, one opposed. Resolution passes. Resolution 245-20, designating 611 Front Street, Plainfield Urban Renewal LLC as redeveloper for the redevelopment of certain properties in the city of Plainfield. Do you have any questions from council? Yes. Go ahead, Brad. Go right ahead, Councilman. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Uh, Mr. Mancello, maybe is this a reason why it's with um, the Department of Health and Social Services and not the Department of Economic Development? Uh, yes, on this specific matter, uh, Director Jackson had reached out to me and based on a uh, previous uh, uh, work relationship, uh, Director Jackson asked me uh, for a legal opinion on whether she was conflicted. Ultimately, we agreed in abundance of caution that she would not uh, coordinate this matter and that this matter would be handled by Director Brown. Um, so based on her previous relationship with this particular developer, we opted to not have her. Okay, uh, last question. Uh, Director Brown, pros and cons. Well, how do we benefit from this? We are looking at, I mean, I can tell you what the development looks like and, and take you through that, but it is certainly looking at a, a Marino's track, which is the old Marino's track that we have been trying to develop since 2000. Uh, it is bringing in uh, apartments. Uh, it's about a 400,000 square foot development of which 30,000 square feet would, would be retail, of which uh, we're talking about a 25,000 uh, square foot supermarket uh, in that neighborhood. Um, and so the benefit is that we will be bringing in uh, new amenities uh, to that neighborhood. It, it is uh, certainly been one that we have been trying to, the city has been trying to develop for over 20 years. And this is a good opportunity uh, to work with a developer who has an experience of, of doing work, not only in our city, but also in urban communities uh, and sensitive to the needs of those communities as well. Thank you so much. Any other questions from council members? Yes. Councilwoman Davis. Um, just to follow up to Councilman Good's first question um, about Director Brown taking the lead on this. Um, is Director Jackson helping him to shepherd this through the process? While Director Brown answered that question very well, um, development isn't really his background as far as I know. So are we giving him the tools to be successful in spearheading this process? Councilman Davis, I, I can speak to that and I can say absolutely yes. Director Brown is qualified to handle this. We have various professionals who support and advise Director Brown on this project, uh, planners, redevelopment council. So, uh, but to answer your question, Director Jackson is not working on this project specifically uh, because obviously we, we take questions of conflict very seriously and she reached out to me and uh, in abundance of caution, we decided that it was not appropriate for her to work on this project um, and assign it to Director Brown. But I can assure you that he is certainly qualified and has the support of the rest of the team as we move forward. Thank you, Director Brown. Clearly you're a man of many talents. So good luck <laughs> to you. And I hope that your work here really benefits the residents of this city. I echo that. Any other questions from council members? I, I just have one quick comment and, and I understand the, the conflict concept, but I, I think I would just ask that in the future when these occur that, that the uh, administration or corporation council uh, 
announces the conflict without having a question asked for it to be brought forth. Um, I think in full transparency, that should be that should be brought to the table um, without being asked. Any other questions from council? Okay, do we have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? Abstentions? This resolution is approved. Resolution 24620 authorizing the mayor to execute a memorandum of agreement with the New Jersey Medical School Global Tuberculosis Institute. Questions from council members? Seeing none. Yes. Oh, no. <laughs> Councilwoman Davis. Sorry. Um, so, Director Brown, um, and what we, so this is for tuberculosis testing, if I'm correct, right? It's testing and nurse uh, management care. Okay, so in what ways are we going to reach out to like kind of reassure the public that getting tested is going to be safe, especially in this like COVID environment where people are afraid to even go to the doctors? So most of our testing for TB is through a physician. So what happens is they go to the physician, they may get tested for TB, and then we're notified. Then it becomes our... Uh, our mandate to follow up and make sure that they get the services that they need. Got you, thank you. Any other questions from council members? <clears throat> Do we have a motion? So Go. moved. Second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? Abstentions? This resolution is approved. Resolution 24720 authorizing approval to enter into an agreement with the New Jersey Association of County and City Health Officials for the reimbursement of COVID-19 related response activities. Okay, looking for questions from council members. Seeing none, uh, do we have a motion? So we'll move. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? Abstentions. This resolution is approved. Resolution 24820 authorizing the submission of an application to the New Jersey Department of Health Family Services for the WIC Nutrition Program. Looking for questions from council members. Okay, seeing none. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Any opposition? Abstentions? This resolution is approved. Okay, <clears throat> we now come to ordinances on first reading. Uh, clerk, will you please read MC 2020-18 by title? MC 2020-18 is an ordinance authorizing the execution of a financial agreement with 803 South Avenue Urban Renewal LLC and granting a tax exemption with respect to certain properties identified on the city's tax map as block 645, lot 12, and identified in the city's tax records as 757 through 819 South Avenue. Okay. Are there any questions from council members? Yes. Councilwoman Davis, please. Uh, Director Jackson, in the items included to look at, um, we have a existing taxes versus pilot taxes um and the existence taxes are very low compared to the pilot but right now those existing taxes are only on the land right once we build something on that land wouldn't the taxes be more in this case there is an existing building so it is building and land uh, in terms of 803, it's, the, it's adjacent to the Public Works Yard, 803 okay. South Avenue. So you'll see a building on that property right now. So as we de develop that property and build something bigger, are we, can we get more taxes out of like a bigger building or is the taxes going to be the same no matter the size of the building? No. So the, uh, the building is going to be demolished, the current right. building. And so there will be a bigger building. It's gonna be a five-story building uh, with ground floor commercial space. 
and uh, 104 residential units for that particular property. And when you're looking at the taxes, the current taxes, uh, we're looking at uh, that being around uh, 400, I mean 40,000, a little over 40,000. And the city share of that is 23,000. We also attached uh, to the uh, pilot, the spreadsheet that looks at the 30 year. And so over the 30 year period, on, based on existing taxes, the city would get uh, $971,000 in taxes, almost a million dollars over 30 years. But based on this pilot, the city would get over that same period, $11 million and some change. And so uh, that's because we're significantly improving the property. Uh, without a tax abatement, uh, the property wouldn't be improved to this level. Okay, so two questions then. Yes. So when you improve it, the taxes go up. But if we don't give a pilot to this, uh, it won't improve because nobody would build on it? Uh, yes, so the developer uh, doesn't have enough incentive at that point uh, to develop on it. You'll also uh, note the rate of return. So we look at the rate of return on an investment. And so for the investment that they're making in the property, uh, their rate of return or, or their yield uh, uh, is roughly 7%. And that's lower than what EDA projects uh, for a good rate of return. And so that justifies the pilot. Are these one and two bedroom units that uh, this property is gonna have? Yes. Okay, so I think one of my other concerns is um, if we grant this pilot, um, the city, while the city does get a larger share, mm -hmm. um, our school district does not get a share, mm -hmm. but yet we're potentially bringing in mm -hmm. more people to, the school district and they have a bigger burden to share. And while people will argue that the city should worry about the city, if we talk about this ideal of one playing field, we have to also keep in mind that that includes the success of our school district as well. Yeah, and so this is an ongoing pilot discussion. Uh, the, re, uh, the number of children uh, that are produced is based on bedrooms and so therefore, at, we have historical data, records updates the data periodically that looks at one and two, studio one and two bedrooms do not produce the number of children that three bedrooms produce. And so you will notice that in most of our developments around the train station, we are not doing uh, three bedrooms. And if we do, it's a minimum number of three bedrooms. Uh, so again, the number of school children uh, that is produced uh, is based on the number of bedrooms. Thank you. And may I add to this, Mr. Council President, That's the, right. the cost of light is way greater than the number of dollars that will not go to our school district. And additionally, when you compare that with the overall significantly more dollars that will be coming into the city as a result of development, the choice is do you want to retain blight or do you want to develop and enhance the bottom line of the city and make the city more inviting than it otherwise would be. So those are factors that we also look at when coming to a decision as to whether or not to let what is remain in place or to remove light in favor of development. Uh, I just have a follow-up question. Um, so I wanna thank the mayor for that. I think he makes some very valid points um, about the cost of light but in these pilot agreements or coming up with these pilots, are we actively having a conversation with other stakeholders in the city to ensure that we all win or we all get a piece of this uh, incentive? Uh, I would say yes to that question. Uh, we always in these pilot agreements negotiate community benefits uh, associated with this. And so 
some of those community benefits are for education. Some would actually be for equipment for the school children. Uh, some will be uh, rehabbing and improving our parks, which our children utilize. So with each uh, financial agreement, we are negotiating a community benefits agreement. Uh, in this case, the community benefits agreement is 100,000, which will go to our redevelopment trust uh, to do the kinds of things that we need to do to improve the quality of life for all Plainfielders. Thank you. I'll now entertain a motion uh, to adopt this ordinance on first reading. So moved. Second. Okay, clerk, may I have a roll call? Council members Davis. Yes. Councilman Good. Yes. Councilman McKenna. Yes. Councilman McCray. Yes. Councilwoman Mills Ransom. Yes. Vice President Armani. Yes. Council President Hockaday. Yes. That is unanimous. This ordinance has been adopted on first reading. Thank you. Uh, we now move to public comment. A total of 60 minutes has been allocated for all public comments to be presented this evening. Each speaker will be allotted five minutes. If you wish to be heard, please hit the hand icon to be recognized and you will be unmuted. Once unmuted, give your name and address for the record. Uh, each, the floor is now open. Um, caller, you need to unmute yourself. Hello, all. This is Timothy Priano of 1405 Martin Avenue. I uh, hope all are surviving this COVID we're living in. We are starting our 15th week doing the best trying to feed those in need. Unfortunately, we have to stop using Ducray School of the Arts building so that the school can prepare for the fall programs. Food insecurity in Plainfield describes a household inability to provide enough food for every person to live an active, healthy lifestyle. In the United States currently, in 19, uh, 2019, one in nine people struggled with hunger. The amount today with COVID is beyond what anyone has seen since the Great Depression. All those who've been involved have seen with their own eyes the need for so many that have never been in this position before COVID-19. Our volunteers are amazing and are committed, like Albie Salute Fitness, Crazy Dozen, First Tea, Gentlemen's Make Change, Hackensack, Meridian Health, Joko's Wild, New Jersey Kings of Grand Lodge, Ladies of Ghost, Omega Phi, uh, Psy Fraternity, Pembroke Area Block Association, the Plainfield Country Club, Nine West Golf Course, Plainfield Public Library, Plainfield Public School Board of Education, Plainfield Senior Citizens, Queen of Queens Grand Lodge, the Rotary Club of Fanwood, Scotch Plains, Second Impression of Piscataway, Sleepy Hollow Neighbors, the Coffee Box, the Salvation Army, Tri Phi Omega Chapter, aka Sorority, U Hall of Plainfield, United Way of Union County. The Rotary Club of Plainfield Starfish Food Pantry in the Plainfield YMCA with the Greater Somerset Y started this as an eight-week giving, which has turned into a wonderful partnership at 15 weeks. Keisha Chubb, Michael Townley, Sean McKenna, and myself are asking us to find a suitable place to store the self-stable food and fresh fruits and vegetables weekly for Saturday distribution for those in need. We are asking the mayor, the council, administration, shareholders, please look at ways that this program can continue to help the people of Plainfield. We have a large undocumented population and many that do not want to be involved with paperwork to feed their family. For the last 14 weeks, we have given out 10,551 boxes, equaling 7,938 households, 
which then equals 31,528 people that have been able to eat. And we cannot forget our seniors that we've delivered to their homes, uh, 1,041. We understand that everyone has a million things going on and we're all worried about the future, but we all are working hard to find a place and we've had no luck relocating for the food bank to be held here in Plainfield. And I know Union County has a food bank that they're giving away this week on Thursday and another Thursday in this month, but it's at Kane University. And for the majority of the people that go to Salvation Army are walk-ups. Ducre, we've been doing drive-through, but we're just pleading that somebody in the community somewhere will be able to help us find a building that we can store 15 to 20 pallets a week so we can distribute to people throughout our community. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Priyal. Uh, our next member of the public is now unmuted. Talking is permitted. Please unmute yourself. Ms. Cooper. Good evening. Good evening. Sam Sakitha Cooper here, 90 Brokaw Boulevard in Plainfield. I uh, want to say kudos to the creation of an app. I think that's an awesome idea. I am hoping that it's going to be meaningful to the community, um, much better than our current website is. I can tell you that tonight I knew the meeting was scheduled and I went to look on the website. I went to look on the Facebook page and there is nothing. There are less than 20 people on this call right now. There's a reason for that. It's because one, they either forgot about the meeting, two, they didn't see a reminder on any of the pages. They didn't see anything in the weekly newsletter. I looked and I looked again and I had to reach out to someone to ask for the link for this meeting tonight. I don't care that it may have been the same link that we've been using. What I care about is constant and consistent effective communication to our community so that we can have a chance to be heard and prepared on what's going on within our city. Um, I'm disturbed to hear that we are building yet another apartment complex. As a business owner myself, I do realize that we need revenue. However, thinking about the fact that we are now creating another residential dwelling that is 104 units. All I can think about is the burden that this will cause on the school system that is already underfunded and stressed out with its current financial issues. You cannot tell me that there is data that supports that these one to two units won't produce any detriment to the school system. There are families who live two and three and four in these small two and three um, you know, bedroom apartments because they have no other choice, because they've been displaced, whatever the, you know, their means may be. And those children have a right to our school district. And you can't say to me that they're not going to use our school system, which is already um, having $25 million of its funds that come from the state sent over to the charter schools. So we really need to think about allowing, or shall I say disallowing any more residential dwellings that are brand new. I, I just can't even, I couldn't believe that I heard that just now. So if we could look at that, um, that would be great. There's no policing going on on how many people are in these buildings or how many people are residing. So you can't tell me that those um, occupants, at least half of them, are going to have a child or two that's going to be into the district. Secondly, uh, PMUA is backed up. There are residents who are attempting to have bulk pickups and they're being told December and January of next year. And I do understand that some of the employees have been furloughed. I do understand that um, some employees have been you know, terminated altogether. However, that is a huge undertaking for the resident to have to take those bulk items to the yard, which is the only other alternative that 
PMUA is offering. When you think about people that are selling their homes and they're attempting to empty out the content so that they can prepare for that sale, what are they supposed to do if they can't get their items picked up for a service that is a part of what they pay quarterly? So I'm hoping that you know people that are on this call, they can look into that as well to see if there's some other option that we can do. Um, I would also uh, ask that you please consider a 30 second PSA regarding the census. Uh, the people are coming out and I know that um, because in other towns they stuck that little um, notice that they've been out and you know you need to be counted. We need to make sure that people know that the census is coming door to door for those who did not complete their census timely. I can't say enough that our public website, meaning the city hall website, does not do enough in giving information to the community. If you look at your city's Facebook page, I believe I just looked at it, there was approximately 4,000 people. We have over 50,000 people in the city. So how are you communicating with them? Robocalls are not going to get it. That weekly newsletter is not going to get it. We need to come out with something publicly on television. We, we had some ads last year in reference to the restaurants. Why can't we have something this year? Um, again, 30 seconds, something that says, hey, we are Plainfield, we are here for you. Please get counted, call this number if you need assistance whatever it may be, but we need to do something so that we can be counted, so that we can get that necessary money to continue to fund us. Council President, five minutes has expired. Thank you, that was right in the nick of time. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome, thank you. <clears throat> okay, uh, the next caller, talking is permitted. Go right ahead and unmute yourself, Mrs. Berkeley. <clears throat> Mrs. Burwinkle, did you intend to raise your hand? Talking is now permitted. At this point, I do not. There we go. Oh, you did not? I do not. Okay, thank you, sorry. Okay, so seeing no more for uh, public comment, I'd like to make a motion to close public comment. Motion. Second. 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 All, all in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Any opposition, abstentions? Public comment is now closed. Uh, I will now uh, ask for a motion to adjourn the meeting. So moved. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? Abstentions? This meeting is adjourned. Thank you all.